What is going on, my online poker players? All right, I have another really good session to break down today on Ignition Poker at the 200 No Limit Stakes. You know, I actually just played this session last night, so it's a fresh one and a good one for that matter, where I did hit quads, and that doesn't happen too often for me. So I figured let's take a look at this session, what happened. But I also want to give you guys some tips that I've learned over the years playing online poker that have changed the way I approach the game. You know, these are great for beginners, but I also think they're good for anybody out there who's been playing for a while and just not getting the results they're looking for. Of course, you know, this session will once again be played on Ignition Poker, which is one of the main sites I play on every single week. They've got great software and the games are fairly easy to beat at these mid stakes. Of course, if you guys do want to get started here, there will be some bonus links you can check out directly below in the description and comments. Please tap that like and let's get into these hands and tips. Okay. All right, uh, my first tip, and uh, I want you guys to really think about this, is that confidence is everything in poker. And what I mean is that if you go into a game with a bad attitude or think that every time you play, your aces are going to get cracked, you've already lost before you started playing. You know, you never want to approach this game, whether you're playing online or live, thinking like that. You need to have some confidence in your abilities as a poker player. Don't overlook that. Second is that in most sessions, you need to stay aggressive. You know, playing aggressive, I'm sorry, playing passively or just sitting back waiting for big hands isn't going to cut it, especially as you move up in the stakes. So really stay aggressive for the most part. You can mix, you know, some of those limp plays when you're first or second to act with those like uh, small pocket pairs and you know, suited, low suited connectors, you can mix those in, but for the most part, just stay aggressive. Third is that when you take a loss, because they are going to come, guys, you have to move past it quickly. You can't dwell on it or let it ruin your day. You know, if you can't accept that, then maybe poker isn't for you. And I'll give you guys a good example. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to post some losses next week, but I took a really rough beat on a, uh, I think it was like a $600 all in. I was way ahead, but the river got to us and, you know, we took a loss. I didn't let it ruin my day. It sucks to lose a $600 hand and just, you know, lose 600 bucks, but it's part of the game, guys. Um, and it happens. Okay. And fourth would be that you need to constantly review your play and see how well you're playing after every session you play. Now, when you play online poker, it's nice because you could pull up the hand replayer and you could see if you really just did what you needed to right? Did you make good value bets? Did you maybe throw some bluffs in or did that session not work out for you? If you're analyzing the way you play every time you play, it's going to help you out. And I estimate that 1% of all online poker players actually go with the hand replayer and just see how they played. Usually every poker site has this. Um, it's very easy to use on Ignition and uh, just something to think about. Okay, last is that you need to have a life outside of playing poker. You know, if you just want to, I mean, if you just play and think about poker 24 hours a day, you are going to burn out quickly. Trust me on that. I play three or four times a week, just a couple hours a day, but typically it's been a little bit uh, longer for me lately. My sessions have been creeping up a little bit. Plus, you know, I've been playing like four or five times a week. So I've kind of just like been playing a little bit too much, but what I'm what I'm getting at here is, you know, you just don't want to overdo it. You definitely want to uh, have a, a life outside of poker. Okay, and stick with me to the end here, guys, because we do have a big hand, like I said, hitting quads. You just don't want to miss. Also, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, things like that, feel free to message me below. You know, I'm always responding to people here on the channel because I'm here to help you guys out. You know, I'm trying to win every time I get into a session you know, I, I just love, I just love to play, man. And I know there's a lot of you out there who feel the same way. Um, but you know, I don't do this full time. I'm definitely like a, a part-time player. The profit's been good for me over the years. I've been playing for so long. There's definitely been some times I've thought about going full time doing this, you know, uh, but you know, I haven't, I haven't stepped into that yet, but maybe, um, maybe I will at some point, you know? Uh, all right. All right, so here we had a 5-4, actually a, a really good flop, but um, turn card was a 3. Another bet here. I had to call because we had the up and down, uh, but this guy's going to put in another bet. I actually just gave this hand up. I don't know what he was repping at all right there, but I was kind of like, all right, buddy, like I'll get out of your way, you know? 
the 5-4 didn't work out for us right there. Now, like I said, it is okay every once in a while to throw a limp in there with those, you know, small suited connectors if you're first or second to act and the small pocket pairs. You know, the reason that I do it is because I like to see, you know, what everybody else at the table is going to do, at least so I can, you know, see... Um, the problem is like if you're first or second to act and you've got like a small pair, you know, like fours or fives or whatever, um, or, or a suited connector that you just want to play like a five, four or six, five, you're going to get three bet a lot of the time because there's going to be so many players behind you that are going to act right. And you know, the nice thing about this session you're watching is I kind of did a little bit of everything here. You're going to see me three bet. You're going to see me um, throw some bluffs in, be aggressive. So I really like did a little bit of everything um, in this one. You know, all right, so these two going at it, and um, I think the player on my left took this hand down. Let's see. Like I said, I just played this session like last night, so it's pretty fresh. Okay, so the flush is missed. Um, hard to know if this guy is betting a queen. I don't. Th this was a this was a good call by the player on the left. Check this out. Pocket tens, man. That was a good call, for sure. All right, here we go with pocket queens. Now I am in a three bet this hand. You got to be three betting with queens, you know, even from early position raisers. There's been so many times, guys, hear me out, where like, you know, the first or second to act player uh, throws in, you know, a raise, right? If you're raising from early position, you usually have a really good hand, you know, it could be high pocket pairs, could be ace king, um, you know, uh, suited king queens, those type of hands. But when you got pocket queens, man, you got to three bet it regardless. So that's what I did here. And um, we are going to get called down. But what what I was going to say is there's been a lot of times where, you know, I've had pocket queens and then I get four bet or somebody jams on me. A lot of the time, man, like you could be up against aces or kings, but you'd be surprised how many people shove with like an ace king. And if you think about it, when you got pocket queens and you're going up against ace king you are going to be the favorite, you know, even though you're always going to be trying to dodge that, uh, you know, ace or king. Anyways, pretty okay flop for queens. I just didn't like the flush draw out there. So I kind of just jammed here and figured maybe he makes a call here if he's got uh, maybe hands like ace jack, jack king that thinks I'm bluffing. Um, some other hands I could think of, uh, you know, suited ace queens of um, diamonds here. So those are all the hands that could make a call here. I just wanted to protect my hand with the queens. And uh, I think he's going to think about this one. Let's see. All right, ultimately he folded. We would have seen the turn card wasn't really a good one for us because we, we weren't repping a diamond here. So I was okay with my play right there. You know, if you wanted to make a call, make a call. You know what I'm saying? All right, next time we had a 10-4 suited, some diamonds here. Okay, obviously a uh, garbage hand, but um, but yeah, continue sticking with me, guys, because like I said, you are going to want to see the quads <laughs> that we had coming up. Uh, it doesn't happen too often to me, like I said, hitting quads. All right, our 10-4 was not looking too great here. I think we paired the 10 on, yeah, we would have paired the 10 on the river. Literally no idea what either of these player, players has. And I was kind of surprised when I saw, I was like, what the hell? Weird. Oh my God, this was such a frustrating spot, guys. So check this out. So um, ace-3 suited of hearts, we are in the big blind. There's definitely different ways that you could play this hand, um, but I opted to three bet this. That's what I went for. I think.
think a lot of players would maybe just flat call this. The reason I like three betting is because um, it puts pressure on other players who are going to call this raise to uh, make a decision if they want to invest uh, more money into whatever hand they have. Plus, ace three of hearts, it's still a it's a decent hand. It's not as good as like having an ace five suited, which flops a lot better. But it's not a bad hand by any means. And I think, um, yeah, the guy on my right here is going to make this call. And that's why I, I three bet this was so I could really just either get both players to fold or isolate against one other player. So that's why I did it. I just didn't want to just make a flat call here. Something to think about in your own game if you if you would just make a call here. But I, if three betting just it made sense to me to do right here, so that's what I did. All right, this guy, the initial raiser is going to fold, I believe, and then um, the player on my right is going to make the call, and we're gonna, you know, go heads up to a flop. Okay, so we ended up pairing the board. Um, kind of a scary flop, though. Uh, our hard draw is dead, clearly. Um, you got a spade draw out there. You got those nine, weird 9-10 nine, type of hands that might call a 3-bet that are suited. Um, I was okay with checking here. Now, when we checked and hit the ace on the river, I knew we were good, right? No issues there. Um, so, uh, just trying to see what this player does, if he's going to bet. Let me see what I did. I don't even remember exactly. Now, I did play this hand passively. And, and like I said, the reason is our kicker sucks, even though, like, I'm 95% sure we're ahead here. Don't really put this guy in an ace at all, especially when he checks here. Okay, so that's when I went for a bet. Now, I figured he might just fold here. Maybe he calls with, like, a pair, thinking, like, I'm bluffing, I guess. That's possible. All right, he made the call. River card was a 6. So the hand I was thinking, 10-9 got there. Um, a weird backdoor flush got there. I mean, I don't know. But, uh... There was no way I could really fold this, so I made the call. And I was like, are you kidding me? That is disgusting, guys. That's just disgusting. All right, so starting this session off with a little bit of a uh, a drop down. So, I mean, we lost maybe like 30 or 40 bucks to start things off. But don't worry because we're about to turn it around. So, you know... What you saw right there was a little bit of frustration. And one of my tips, guys, was that, you know, when you take those beats, you just got to move on from it and just continue playing, right? Which is exactly what I did. I could have quit after that and been like, man, are you kidding me? That's just a disgusting way to lose that hand. Um, why are you calling my bet? First of all, he called my turn bet of like 20 bucks on a flush draw with two aces out there. His, there was no straight draw for him. He called me basically just on a miracle flush, right? So um, that was a pretty disgusting beat with that king five. There's no other way to um, to put it. He probably should have folded against my three bet preflop too. So that guy just got extremely lucky, let's be honest. But it's all good because, uh, like I said, we are about to you know see a, a, a quads hit. And if I would have quit for the day, wouldn't have got there. So you got you to gotta play through the pain sometimes is what I'm getting at here. All right, a couple more hands, so get ready for it. Yeah, man, play through the pain. Have no fear. All right, so pretty standard fold. All right, another fold. Now, if this was suited, I definitely would have played it, but it was not.
or in the 510. All right, so I believe right after this hand, we're going to get into the uh, to the monster that helped us out. And let me just recap on some of these uh, tips for you guys before we even get into that. Um, so confidence, right? Confidence is just something you need to have when you play poker, right? It doesn't matter if it's live or online, you got to have it. You can't play with a bad attitude, right? Or in a bad mood. It just never works out. And um, if you've played long enough, you know what I'm talking about. Second is that, you know, most of the time and almost all the time, you just need to be aggressive. You know, it's just the best way to play. You can throw in the limbs if you're first or second to act with those small pocket pairs and low suited connectors if you want to see a flop with them, right? And then, you know, third, when you take a loss like I did, you know, early on here, just move on from it, continue playing good poker, and just don't let it ruin your day, first off. And then fourth would be that, you know, you should be reviewing your sessions. There's hand read players online where you could see, did you make good plays, you know, or did you play like crap that day? And just look at what you can improve and, you know, also have a life outside of playing this. You don't want to play too much poker because you will burn out eventually. And when you burn out, you know, it's not a good thing uh, for your uh, mental health, guys. And here we go with the five. So just doing what I'm talking about, man. Just uh, going to see a, a flop for cheap here. We are going to have a razor. And, you know, to be honest, pocket fives, uh, it's one of the pocket fives I feel like I never hit sets with. But in, in this situation, we did, you know, like I feel like I never hit with it, but I did. And if you want to know how often you hit a set, it's something like 13% of the time uh that you you will hit a set i mean it's something like that all right so he raises six bucks obviously an easy call here okay and get ready for it get ready for it Oh, yes. All right, so we got the five, guys. This is actually a good flop for us for a couple of reasons. The hands that I could think of that would be hard to get away from, you know, you got your queen jacks, which could, which could still beat us. You've got, you know, your flush draws, you know, your ace jacks of uh, diamonds or ace uh, queen of diamonds. You've also got um, hands that might have a hard time folding, ace kings, king queens, those type of hands. So really... Um, I'm just going to make a jam play here and hope somebody <laughs> calls me because, <clears throat> you know, it's it's tough when you um, when you flop a set, it's so hard anyways. And then, you know, you got to like avoid so many cards on this type of flop. This was a, not a great flop, honestly, because, you know, a better one would be like a five deuce ten or something like that. All different suits. But this one is very draw heavy very draw heavy which is why i made this play i figured maybe someone will just make a call here um and uh you know hopefully our hand holds up and we will be a big favorite if somebody calls like 100 percent. all right so we got a caller here would have been nice if both players called this one <clears throat> um it would have. It would have been a really nice one. All right, anyways, king-queen, a pretty loose call. Terrible turn card, up and down straight draw, now possible. But we got quads in that guy's face, slam dunk. We did it right there. Okay, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed another one here. Um, hope everyone uh, crushes uh, their next session. You know, um, I also, I don't know if I forgot to mention, you guys can get on our poker newsletter as well. We send out one email a week on just hand analysis and tips to help you guys make more money at the tables. There'll be some links below in the description and comments for that. As always, guys, thanks for watching this, and we'll see you on the next poker video.